Next up, at UFC 304, we have the main event of the evening. We have another rematch. We got Leon Edwards taking on Bilal Muhammad. Leon Edwards, 22-3 in his career. 4-0 and in his last five. He's really 4-0-1, oh, and, and that one is a no contest with Bilal Muhammad. He is looking to defend his belt for the third time. He's taking on Bilal Muhammad, 23-3 and three in his career, 5-0 and oh in his last five, and finally getting his title shot. It only took nine wins in a row and a full year layoff, but here he is, Bilal Muhammad, in a main event getting a title shot. None of us ever thought this was going to happen. He's taking on Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards, the very well-rounded fighter, the current champion of the world. Primarily a striker. He's got great body kicks, good boxing, nice, solid offensive wrestling if he decides to use it. He averages about one takedown per fight. He was able to take down Nate Diaz, Kamara Usman, and then Kobe Covington in his most recent fight. He's good everywhere, good cardio, solid fight IQ. He is coming off that title defense over Kobe Covington where he defended eight of Kobe's takedowns and got two of his own. He's taking on Bilal Muhammad. Bilal Muhammad's a Khabib. He's just a Khabib at welterweight. Non-stop wrestler. He averages about two takedowns per fight. Solid fight IQ. He knows when he should wrestle versus when he should strike. He has a reputation for being a boring guy, but the reality is that he's always moving forward. He's always putting on pressure. He's always doing something. He has decent striking as well. And while it's not going to win him a ton of fights at the highest level, it did just win him his last two. His last two fights, he shot no takedowns. Zero takedowns against Gilbert Burns a year ago. Zero takedowns before that when he stopped Sean Brady. And he is coming off that win over Gilbert Burns where Gilbert was the one looking to wrestle. He went 0 for 4 in takedown attempts. And this is an interesting fight. It's a rematch. The easy narrative here is that Leon Edwards was winning that first fight and thank God for the eye poke. And while that did look to be the case then, I'm not going to dispute that, that was years ago. And since then, we have seen improvements by head and shoulder improvements in Bilal striking. He just won two striking matches. We've also seen Bilal just find his swagger, shoot a bunch of takedowns. And we also, the analogy I use, if we've seen Bilal Muhammad go from hated to loved, this guy was one of the most hated guys in this sport. Just the memes, remember the decision. People weren't loving his fighting style. And I think there was so much hate and then he just continued to win, continued to win, just did what he did, continued to win, continued to move forward. Seems to be a good guy. All of a sudden, it's come full circle. They love him again. I, the analogy I use is he's the nickelback of MMA. It was funny to hate on him. And then you sit down, you think about it for a minute. You're like, he actually is pretty fucking good. Look, look who he's beating. Look who he's beating. This, this guy, why, why did we hate Bilal? This guy's great. So the nickelback of MMA in Bilal Muhammad, full love. He's probably going to get cheered a lot more than people think at this event. With that being said, I do think Leon Edwards wins this fight. I think he can defend the takedowns. And then in that case, Bilal, while he is beating Gilbert Burns, who had the injury, and while he is beating Sean Brady in striking-only matchups, he, he can't beat Leon Edwards in a striking-only matchup. So he's got to get that wrestling going. Leon has fought three wrestlers in a row, if you count Kamaru twice. Three wrestlers in a row. That's all he's done is work on the takedown defense. So I think he can defend the takedowns. I think he can manage the range. I think he can get it done. I'll be rooting for Bilal all day long. He is my nickelback. What do you think, Jakey boy? <sighs> Here we I, go, sorry. guys. Wait, before you do your little thing. Can I get credit for the nickelback? I mean, I, I honestly was very proud of that. I think that's a, like a very good analogy. Yeah, nickelback sucks and Bilal doesn't. Um, listen, that, guys. That's a while. We have, uh, and I understand... You know, everyone's got to point fingers at somebody and blame somebody and trash somebody and troll somebody. And I'll, and I'll wear that this week, guys. I understand that this is a controversial pick, that most of you are going to be on Leon. Guess what, guys? I've been in your shoes. Right? I've been I've been a Leon guy. I was a fucking Leon guy before anybody gave a fuck about Leon Edwards. you understand me? The second it was announced that Leon Edwards was going to fight Kamar Usman a second time for the title. I put out a tweet that says, don't forget, Leon Edwards sleeps Kamar Usman. I put money on it. That's exactly what happened, right? And guess what? They rematched again, the third fight. And you know what everyone told me? Hey, Jacob, you stupid fuck. Why are you betting Leon Edwards? Kamar Usman was dominating him the entire fight. 
How could you bet? And I put $1,000 on Leon Edwards. He was my lock of the week. Not only the first time when he beat Usman, but the second time when he beat Usman as well. But everyone said, dude, didn't you watch that last fight? He was smoking him. How could you ever bet Leon? He was smoking him. Didn't you watch the last fight? Didn't you watch the last fight? Didn't you watch the last fight? But guess what? I did watch the last fight, and I saw what I needed to see, and I knew who Leon was, and I still picked him, even though he was getting smoked and was quitting and had a Hail Mary KO. Well, guess what? What's everyone saying this week, Angelo? Jacob. Didn't you watch the last fight? How can you pick Bilal Muhammad? Didn't you watch the last fight? Didn't you watch the last fight? The head kick. Then you see the hang 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 He was smoking him, Jacob. And I'm not going to be as passionate as I am typically in these lock of the week fights and these lock of the week breakdowns because below Muhammad is my lock of the week. I'm going to let the birds be birds. They're going to be chirping. They're going to flap their little wings because guess what? <laughs> motherfuckers i've been here before i heard all this shit before you guys think that you're so clever at all didn't you watch the last fight you know when you were also saying that when vicente luke knocked out below muhammad out fucking cold and everyone said, oh my God, they're going to rematch. He's just going to fucking knock him out again. And guess what happened? Bilal smoked that guy. And that was before Vicente Luque's brain was bleeding all over the place. <laughs> I fucking hated, listen to me guys. I fucking hated Bilal Muhammad. I've been the Leon guy. I've put thousands of dollars on Leon Edwards. I know Leon Edwards. I've been saying forever that Bilal sucks. That if he didn't get poked in the eye by Leon Edwards, he'd be in the fucking PFL because nobody would give a fucking shit about him. But guess what? As I've said from the beginning of 2024, it is time to put our biases aside. And when you're looking at this fight from the X's and the O's, I understand Leon's the better striker. I understand that Leon's good to, got good takedown defense. I understand he's been fighting these wrestlers in Kamaru Usman and Colby Covington, right? But guess what? He folds under pressure. And when he gets under pressure, he tries to wrestle out of pressure. Everyone's going to be saying, why would he shoot? Why would, why would Leon take, shoot a takedown in this fight? I don't fucking know, but he does it every single fucking fight. He shoots takedowns. If you watch that fucking head kick that everyone fucking talks about against Bilal Muhammad, and you keep watching it, Bilal got staggered. He didn't get finished. Leon followed up with shots, and Leon sh fucking shot a takedown 15 seconds after he had this guy hurt. Bilal reverses the position, holds him against the fence for 30 or 40 seconds. Bilal Muhammad is not going to fucking stop. And if you watch Leon fights like I have watched Leon fights, and the reasons why I put thousands of dollars upon him, but it drives me insane. And my $1,000 against Usman in that third fight, I almost fucking lost it because guess what? Leon Edwards has no sense of urgency. He will let people stay on his hips. He will let people win minutes. And we've seen if things start going south, he has no inner drive or fire to try and turn things around. Bilal Muhammad's going to be all over this guy from bell to bell. People are going to be saying, oh my God, Jacob, you said the same thing about Colby Covington. He was your lock of the week. Guess what? Colby didn't do fucking shit. Not my fault. He came in. I thought he was going to be Chaos Covington. He said he broke his foot. He didn't do fucking shit. Bala Muhammad's not going to be standing around like fucking Colby Covington. He's going to be in this dude's face from bell to bell. He's going to be war wear him down. We've seen Leon get worn down before. You look at his fucking record. He fought a broken foot Colby Covington. He barely beat Usman in the f third fight where he should have smoked him. He was getting smoked by Usman. Nearly got knocked out by Nate Diaz. Cheated against Bala in the first fight. Beat a 155 or Rafael Dos Santos. Went through a split decision and nearly got finished in the third round against Gunnar Nelson and then beats a Donald Cerrone and a who the fuck is Peter Sabata before that. It's going to be in new. Guys, and, and you can say what you want. I've heard it all before. We've been here before. Bilal Muhammad's going to win this fucking belt. And every single person's going to be like, Jacob, how did you fucking know? Just like all the Leon stuff. I'm ahead of the game. I'm not chasing this Leon money. Bilal's going to get it done. Pace pressure and that's all it comes down to and new lock of the week what is funny is this is a very controversial um this is a very controversial pick because even in your lock of the week video dude the comments are like this guy's an idiot it's just entertainment another loss and then the other comments are like i love it i think Bilal. like people are split 
Oh, we've been and having nobody fun sees the middle. Here I am seeing the middle. I just placed the bet while you were talking. I placed the bet. I did Bilal Muhammad plus five and a half. You know that's plus one ten. Yeah, I saw that. So I didn't I even just talk about my bet. bet. Well, don't. It's premium. Oh, it's massive, so, and you shared it already. Fifteen hundred dollars plus two hundred. I always fucking put my money where my mouth is. And it doesn't make it right. And I'm not saying tail me. I do the research. I put my money on what I think. Obviously, last week with Diani, it didn't work out or whatever. But we've hit plenty of these bets before. I always put my money where my mouth is. I have $1,500 on Below Muhammad to win $3,000. And I can't wait. And I think we're going to live stream it uh, Saturday. So if you want to see the live reaction, um, check it out Saturday. We'll be sitting there. We don't run from shit. We'll be sitting there, and I, I can't wait from this one. I'm kind of, Usually, I'm sitting here screaming and yelling stuff. Obviously, I get passionate about whatever, but this week with all the shit talk, dude, I've been here before, guys. I've been here before. Yeah, I mean, I, I frankly, I think uh, I, I think that's a great bet that I just placed, and if you go, here's a quick little sales pitch. If you're a premium member, and if you like that plus five and a half bet, if you go to the new tool, this is a video of the new tool, this is the data analyzer. If you do your filters however you want, and then you go to the chart and you hover over the dots, the dots are the individual fights. If you click a dot, it'll take you to the footage. You can watch the fight. If you can see on my screen here, the very thing at the bottom says points on scorecards. So what that basically is telling you is, did Bilal Muhammad cover his plus five and a half or his plus three and a half? In this case, he was 13, yes, 13 points up, no problem. But you can work your way through and see how often does he cover the point spread. I think he's going to cover the spread here. I think the only way he doesn't cover the spread if he gets completely shut out, which will not happen. He will have some wrestling success. Or if he gets finished. The, the getting finished could happen, but I don't think so. I think he's waited too long, trained too hard, and I'm not taking anything away from Leon because I think Leon wins this fight. But I think Leon wins a point fight. I think it's a close 49-48 type fight. 49, you know, like 47. Like I, I think it's a close fight here. And that's why I do like Leon's the plus like a five close and a half. fight. He better knock him out or he's going to fucking get smoked. This is this is so funny about the, I the think Leon close fight. the Leon fucking And I'm picking Leon the win just so we're clear. Is uh somebody said I I, I saw the UFC embedded episode Bilal looks drained and overtrained. It's like what he, he looks like he's in the bed. Everyone that's seen Bilal this week has been like, dude, he looks like he's in fantastic shape and this guy who probably has money on Leon is trying to like trying to convince himself. The dude landed one head kick. You know the, the significant head strikes in that first round of the first fight? By the way, I guess nobody's ever came back after losing the first round to fucking win a fight in their lives. The significant head strikes, which I would say that head strikes is like the majority of where you're going to do your damage was 10 to fucking 7. Leon had 10, Bilal had 7. The total significant strikes was 19 to, to, to 8 because Leon had 4 uh, leg kicks, 5 body shots or whatever. It was one head kick. Leon survived, or Bilal survived. It's so fucking nonsense, dude. Well, listen, I'm on the other side. Of you. I do not agree with your pick. I picked Leon Edwards. So no one's ever I'm on the other won a side. rematch before, guys. But Man, I think it's a. I do think this fight is close. Uh, I think the odds are, are certainly pretty wide. And the point I made in my quick picks was you, you ran through all the injuries and the circumstances. We really haven't seen Leon Edwards truly win a fight against a nonstop wrestler. Kamaru Usman was out wrestling the shit out of him. He knocked him out, so yes, he truly won that fight. But he's you a understand good. Usman's right. a good striker. He will entertain the strike, and he's a. And I said this before, and the reason why I liked e Leon against Usman is because he won't chain wrestle. He's a single shot. He'll get on the single yeah. heel, get it, or he doesn't. He doesn't hang out there. He'll go back to space. He works back in. He'll entertain the strike. And the reason why I loved Colby was that he was going to chain wrestle. He was going to stay he on Leon. Nothing. Leon can yeah. defend the first shot, but eventually if you start wearing him down, you even saw towards the end, Colby was able to get some takedowns. Um, but Colby just didn't do that for four fucking rounds, so it didn't even matter. Bilal's going to be on him. He's going to chain wrestle. He's going to wear this guy down. And once Leon starts fading fights, watch that Gunnar Nelson fight. Watch how he ended the third round of that fight, just holding on for dear life. We got 100 people asking, and we got a super chat asking. Nut Dollar 99 says, explain the five and a half bet again. So the way it works is you buy points on the judge's scorecard. Every single judge has to score every single round 10 points or fewer. So that's why if you have... Just um, add up the judges' scorecards and add five to Bilal. And if he wins, if he has more points, 
then Correct. you win. If he doesn't, you lose. It's just like a, it's just like buying. It's just like a support. A, He's got to win a point like, spread in the NBA or the NFL. You just got to add five and a half to it. Just like if you're your favored plus three and a half, you take the plus three and a half dog in the NFL. You the total score three and a half. Do, do they cover or not? You do that, but with the judges' scorecards. Yeah, so the way Bilal, that bet doesn't pay is if he gets completely shut down. He doesn't win. I think he's got to win one round on all the judges' scorecards and then in another round on, like, two judges' scorecards is the math. And the if reason he doesn't why it's plus rounds, money is people think he might get finished, obviously. Correct, yeah. If he doesn't win any rounds, then you're not going to win the bet. And if he gets knocked out, you're not going to win the bet. But he can win the fight outright, the bet will cash anyway, or lose a decision that's close enough and you will hit. So these bets make sense for this circumstance. I think the fight goes to a decision. I think that it'll be close. And even though I think Leon wins, if Leon wins a 49-48, boom, bet hits. You know what's going to be so funny is when Leon does take that first shot and everyone's going to be like, what the fuck? Why is he? And I'm going to be sitting there smiling because I know what's coming. He's well, going to try to count go. so. $8,800 in DraftKings for Leon, seventy four for Bilal. I'm on the Leon side, but I don't think he finishes Bilal. So I don't know what that's going to look like. I have to see how Leon scored in his last two fights because if he wins this one, it'll look like those. Bilal Muhammad at $7,400, if you think he gets that wrestling going, is very, very juicy. Obviously, Jacob will be in that camp. Guys, that is the breakdown. I am going to ask you to become a premium member. But before I do that, I'm going to ask you to use the affiliate link. Everybody just asked about that five and a half bet. I got that at Bet Online. If you use our affiliate link to sign up with Bet Online, we're going to make some money and then I'm going to give you 50 bucks. It's just that simple. We want picks.com slash bets. Use the link, sign up, make a deposit. They'll pay us because it's an affiliate link and then we'll slice off some of that money and we will give it right back to you. After you do that, you should check out the tools. The latest tool is the data analyzer. The data analyzer is going to give you every fight on every card, this is not just for the next event, this is for every single published event and fight that is on the UFC site. You select your fighter, you work through the stats, you can see every single data point you've ever wanted to see, then you can add your filters. In the example in this video, we're looking at Bilal Muhammad's takedowns, then we expanded to say, I only wanna see takedowns in decisions, then I just wanna see takedowns in decisions that he won, and the average stat is 2.45 per fight. If I say how many per minute, it's 2.73. Then if I move over to the button, I'll see the judges that scored the fight. I'll see how they scored it. And if I click that little button, I can watch that fight itself. It's the greatest tool that's ever been made. It's available right now for premium members. We want picks.com. Just click become a member at the top. It's only $10 for an entire month. You're also going to get other tools like the Prop Hunter, which is curated data that will help you find specific points for prop bets. You're going to get the line movement tracker, which is going to give you the opening odds, the current odds, the win probability, and line movement for every fighter on every card. You're going to get the detailed data, metrics, and analytics. You're going to get the DraftKings optimizer. And you're going to get the artificial intelligence picks, breaking down fights based solely off of historical data. And then Artem, who has given you his picks and bets for far more than just UFC with contender series around the corner. That is the way to go. All of this crap that I just mentioned, all of it, $10 for an entire month in one single ridiculously low price package. A couple yeah, super man. chats. I just uh, want to say as well, um, everyone, before, not in the live chat, but after the, this video is up, if you're watching this video, because I want receipts, man. You let me know in the comments. If you're all over Leon, let me know that Leon's going to dominate all this type of stuff because I want these fucking receipts, man. I've been here. I'm telling you, Angela, you know. I've been here before. I had oh. Leon against the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, and he fucking slept him, just like I said. And everyone doubted me then. Let me hear it. Jacob's used to the hate. $20 super chat from Chris Walls. Lock of the week. Let's go. Fire emojis. Remember his name. Angelo. Say my fucking name. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Bet Slam with Sam. 899 New Zealand. How absurd are these times for fights? It's getting ridiculous. I'm at 305 and it starts at 6 a.m. Australia time. We talked about that when we opened this video up. That's because you people, and when I say you people, I mean people who get to watch these fights for like basically free or just $10 a month. You don't pay the bills. The Americans do. We pay $80 for these pay-per-views, whether they're good or bad. So they do tailor these fight cards to the American market because we're the ones footing the bill. And $1.99 from Mexican Vibe. Jacob just convinced Angela to put a half a unit on Bilal. He did. 
I didn't put a half a unit money line, though. I did do that point spread. Jacob, any last words for the human beings until I leave to do the chapters? Uh, if you haven't watched the lock, obviously you know who the lock of the week is. But watch the video. It was a fun video to do. Um, it's a cool little highlight video I put together for Leon, that first fight and stuff like that. So watch the lock of the week video. Like this video, this stream, if you haven't already. Before you guys go, we would appreciate that. By the way, subscribe if you are new. A lot of people watch the videos. I'm sure you guys watch every week without being subscribed. But you're probably going to miss stuff. I mean, Angelo already said Thursday we got Jasmine uh, coming on and stuff. So you might miss certain stuff like that if you're not subscribed. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Um, and I'll probably be live streaming Saturday. So if you guys are, if it's late, if it's early, whatever it is for you, if you want to tune in, we always have a lot of fun on these fucking live streams. We killed it last week and uh, looking forward to doing it again. All right. Well, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. We flexed over 530 people watching live. We appreciate every last one of you. Good luck this weekend. Let's all make some money.